Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Today, my guest is an artist out of Atlanta, Georgia. His name is Mr. Will Reddy. Mr. Reddy, how you doing today, sir? I'm doing excellent, Todd. How you doing, bro? Not too bad. So, Will, are you ready? I am ready. <laughs> if, you stay, if you stay ready, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. I hear you, brother. I couldn't resist. Um, so, for those who don't know Will Reddy, tell us about Will Reddy. Uh, smooth on beef. Uh, Southern Souls, a singer songwriter, love live performing, been doing it for over 20 years. Born in Michigan, finished high school in Memphis, Tennessee, and been in Atlanta since '97. Okay, and how did you get started in the uh, music business? It's so weird. Um, I was in the Air Force for five five years, and um, I knew when I got out the military, I didn't want to work for nobody else. I just said, it's got to be more to life to that. And that, you know, just going to school and then working for somebody, getting in debt and working for somebody. So women used to always say, you got a nice speaking voice. For me being the think out the box person I am, I said, you know what, I'm going to start singing. So I started (laughs) listening to songs that I like on the radio, how they wrote them and stuff like that. And I just got in it that way. So, uh, so is it safe to say, had it not been for the women telling you that you had a smooth voice, you wouldn't have got into the music business? I probably wouldn't have. Wow, that's impressive. Um, so we're going to get into your latest album a little bit later. But let me ask you, um, so did you grow up singing? Did you grow up in a choir? Or how did the, um, or is it just... That's the, weird, that's the weird thing about it. I played sports. I played basketball. I played over in Europe four years. And I never did it, but I, I liked it. You know, I, I was, like I said, I just wanted to have a kind of, I wanted something exciting. I wanted something challenging. I didn't handle a bunch of kids or anything. I wasn't married, so... I figured it didn't work. The worst thing going to happen is that I was going to pay for it <laughs> either right. way. So I just went for it. Yeah, I saw your bio and you're like 6'4". So the basketball thing yeah. kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. When did you decide yeah. that? Um, well, let me ask you. Let me, let's go back. Um, so you said the ladies sort of encouraged you uh, or actually inspired you. I don't know if encouraged you, but inspired you to get into the business. When did you know? Well, they just said I had. They just basically said I had a nice speaking voice, talking voice. Okay. So I just said, "Hey, you know, let me start singing." All right. Never took no lessons. Just started writing songs that fit my voice. Okay. Now, how did the uh, how did the songwriting process go? Because you said you were just, um, you know, you had no intention on being a singer per se. Uh, I would listen to songs that I like on the radio. Songs that I liked a lot, artists I liked, and I would listen to how they did their songs. So I did the same kind of format, but I wanted to make sure that I wrote songs that fit me and I didn't sound like nobody else. Okay, now, who were some, who were some of the artists that you listened to that you sort of mimic or look after? Well, back then, it was like, you know, you had your Midnight Stars, Zap, um, L. Hudson, One Way. Um, you had um, um, Mermaid, uh, Ron Isley, Keith Sweat, people like that. Okay. Charlie Wilson, that band. Okay, all right. So, um, so your first album, now I, I read your bio and it says you're a veteran of, I think six albums or something like that with a new album released. In- actually, yeah, actually yeah, I got to change it cause it's like, I'm going, this will be my eighth one I'm going to do, but oh, I got eighth. seven. Like, so. Okay. Yes, the first album was called Private Party. Okay. And when did that come out? That came out in 97. 97. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so you've been at this, uh, quite a while. Yes, I am. All right. Now, you said you didn't want to work for anyone else. Are you um, truly an independent artist or are you? Independent. 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 I want to stay that way. You want to stay? That was my next question. Did you want to sign with the major label? No, no. You want no, to stay no, strictly I, independent? Yeah, somebody 19 to sign with some label. I just, me, I, you know, I like I like Vinny to do what I want to do when I want to do it, being creative. And then in that case, you know, with labels, you sign with them. And then they, they make you do stuff, and then they don't work, they blame it on you. <laughs> you know? Right, right. So, 
who would you uh, collaborate with uh, on not just this uh, new album, but some of your albums in the past? Well, I, you know, I like I, I like coming with, with up and coming people. I like to mix. Sometimes I have some raps and some of the songs, but I just like up and coming producers and stuff like that. That's hungry, just like I am, and not going to try to charge you an arm and a leg, but want the recognition and you pay them, but you really want the recognition and you're willing to build up because I know the sound I want and everything. So basically, you know, they they're not famous, famous and all like that, but they're really good at what they do. Okay, and going back to. Uh Going back to, let me go back to your childhood a little bit. Um, did you come from a uh, musical family? Were your family or your siblings in music as well? No, that's the weird thing about it. Mom and father, my father passed when I was like 15. But um, no, I, um, nobody in my family fun. Oh, okay. Just, when I got out of the military, I knew I didn't want to work for nobody. Right. And I knew life had to be more exciting you know you hear people even people with good jobs complaining man i don't feel like going to this job that person pissed me off the day at work <laughs> and i'm looking at you know in school all they teach you is to go to school go to college get sixty ninety thousand dollars in debt then they give you a credit card then you gotta work you know what i'm saying they don't teach you hey watch your bet watch your credit build your credit up you can own something right you know they don't teach you that and i you know, I, just, I just you know knew it had to be something more to life and just you know going to work for somebody doing stuff you doing what you have to do all the time i understand doing what you have to do so you can do what you want to do but that shouldn't be your whole life agreed agreed now were you was your family surprised that you chose uh music uh, since you didn't yeah, come from a uh, musical uh family they were very surprised um and yeah they were very surprised and and you know i, I always say there's a there might be a lot of people that, you know, sing better than me or something like that, but they can't outperform me and they can't work harder than me, you know? Right. And, and that's the thing, you know, and I understand it's a business. And if you want to survive in this, you got to take it as a business. It's fun when you first start off singing, but you got to take it as a business, especially when you don't have a big team behind you, putting millions of dollars behind you. You got to learn how to do a lot of stuff yourself, which is a good thing in a way. Yeah. I mean, it takes away a little bit from your performance, but at least you know how to do it in case one day you do get some people, like I'm building my team now. At least even when I hire somebody, I know what needs to be done and how it should be done. So can't nobody just put nothing over my head. Right, right. And I, uh, I've seen a few of your videos on uh, YouTube, and, uh, man, it seemed like you was putting in some work, brother. You was sweating and everything, and I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love performing. I love writing, love performing. Just, you know, writing something that you created and, Turning on other people and they, you know, giving their giving their opinion, their immediate opinion. So let me ask you, um, speaking of performing, um, where do you? I mean, are you have you performed uh, nationwide, all over the place, all over the world? Where where have you? Yeah, performed? I, I performed in and out. I've toured Europe four times, Japan three times, the Caribbean twice. I was in Vegas for a year. I've opened up a Midnight Stars, Zap, L. Hansen, Runway Slave, Millie Jackson, uh, Whispers, Howard Hewitt. A lot of people like that. Oh, I'm wow. Opened up for them. Okay. That's cool. Um, yeah, I'm surprised. Um, I, got, I ran across you, I believe it was on LinkedIn, and uh, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know all of that. But uh, that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I've done a lot of that stuff. And um and then with the, with the with the creation of the internet and different stuff, now you can reach people and from anywhere and buy your stuff and, and connect with them and stuff. So you can use the whole world. Whereas if you're a, a major label, you sell a million a million records, and you might get you might be lucky if you get ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars. If I sell ten thousand records, I get a hundred thousand dollars. I get a hundred thousand. You know, so it, you might not be as famous, but you're getting paid. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the beauty of. Uh the internet um because i think whereas before you probably needed a major label to get your stuff out there now you can uh, pretty much do it all on your own yeah you, you, you create your own audience and stuff before they guarded everything you had to go through them just so you can get known they controlled the radio stations and everything mm -hmm. now there's so many internet and podcast radio stations if you put the work in and connect with people like with me and you i mean you can do it because everybody got a follow I, my philosophy is this right here I feel like you only had a hundred. Feel like you had a hundred, hundred listeners. To me, that's a hundred more people know about me that didn't know about. Me. Correct. Right. That's the way I look at it. Right. Okay. Yeah. You know, and you can build it. All right. So it was never your goal to. Well, was it your goal to when you got started? Did you think that you had to back in '97? Did you think that you had to sign with the label to 
to uh, no i didn't i never i never wanted to go that way i, I just i felt that i wanted to become very well known and wealthy of doing what i love doing but doing it my way because i feel like if you're not you know a lot of labels don't want to sign you unless you're 15 anyway and you're dumb and 15 and you're older it's harder to sign they'll tell you you can't do this but with like i said with the creation of the internet and you create your own fan base they can't nobody tell you what to do you can do your own thing you're making money without them you don't I, to me i always tell people the best way to get a record deal is not to need one <laughs> yeah that makes, that's something you that's makes that makes a lot of sense uh mm -hmm. like a will drop so if you go to them yeah, because you go to them and you ain't got no leverage, you're going to get pimped if they like you. And then you're going to complain about they use you later on. But you go, but if they come to you and you're making money anyway, then you got some leverage. Right, right. That's a, a good idea. I mean, that's a... Uh... Oh, yeah. But you know, they ain't doing it like Barry Gordy did back in the day, walk you through it. Because you guys basically be established anyway before they touch you. Well, they don't call it the music business for nothing, right? Man. What you talking about? That's what they call it. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> music business okay well let's pause right quick will i want to play uh one of your songs here from your uh upcoming uh album that's due to uh due to be released in 2020 this is black coffee right uh, that's correct. all right we're going to play the, the title track right now this is will ready and black coffee
continue our episode after this message. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com Now, back to our conversation. All right, and we're back. Great song, Will. I really liked it. Um, it. Now, 2020, um, this album, where can people, well, it might be too soon, I don't know. Where can people pick up your music? Well, right now, you know, they can pick it up on my website, but it won't be released, uh, like, on iTunes and stuff until, like, in April. Gotcha. Okay. And what's your website? Willready.com. W-I-L-L-R-E-A-D-Y.com. Okay. So, let's get into the, uh, let's get into the album. Uh, what was the, uh, first of all, the title. Uh, explain the title to me. Black Coffee. Black Coffee. Black Coffee. My, my, my whole thing, I, I, I said that I did a lot of research. And I look at it different ways as an indie artist, you know, get creative to promote and market yourself to make you stand out a little different from everybody else. So I look at different ways you can do that. Like you can do track show because a lot of times people can't afford to, you know, for, you know, bring a band all the time. But you can do a track show and they might have a budget for that. So I look at, you know, people always, you know, all these coffee shops pop up. Starbucks alone has over 16,000 coffee shops worldwide by themselves. Then you got Big by B, got Badass, so a lot of coffee shops. So I figured, you know, then I also thought about women, the different colors and flavors women come in. So I you get intertwined into women, if you're talking about coffee and women, if you're talking about the different flavors women of color come in. So I wanted that one, you know, women of color have their own theme song that's praising them. But in the same token, I wanted to create merchandise or a brand called Black Coffee where eventually, you know, I shoot the video and everything and then get my own merchandise into one of these coffee chef franchises. So when I go to New York to do a show, the late, earlier that day, I can go to an upscale coffee shop, do a meet and greet, invite a few people to the show, then at night go do the show and I call it the Black Coffee Tour. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. And you came up that you came up with that by yourself, huh? Yeah, most definitely. I was just doing a lot of research. So what I did, I did a press release and uh, then I put the song out and, you know, let them know, you know, send it. I did my research, got my database full of uh, coffee shops and stuff. Sent it out and I got a lot of good response and I'm going to shoot the video in February. I'm going to shoot the video for Black Coffee here in Atlanta and then I'm going to release it. I'm going to release a single, a couple of singles before I release the, uh, the full album and um, we're going to take it from there. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, keep us keep us posted, man. I'd love to have you back on the show. Yes, Oh, most definitely, man. I'm staying in touch with you. Yeah. Um, so, Black Coffee is the title. Got that. Now, tell us about some of the tracks on the uh, on the album. Oh, you got Black Coffee. You got Nikki. Uh, Nikki is a song I wrote. You know, I, I sit back and I observe stuff. It's stuff. Some of the stuff is personal experience. Some of the stuff I observe or other people going through is just stuff that's going on in society. Nikki is a song. You know, you always got this. <laughs> you always got this woman that's so bad. I she and she know it. And she ain't want to settle down with nobody because the guys, just, whatever they do, they just, you know, when they get their check, they spend a day, is there, this day, is there, is there. So it was a Nikki, a girl got it going on. So that's what I'm about Nikki. I got one called One Love. It's basically talking about everything that's going on in the world, you know, like uh, police shootings, uh, babies having babies, a school shooting, Katrina, you know, just, just different stuff, you know, that's going on in the world. You know, how kids go to school today, like when we went to school, you couldn't even talk back to the teachers. And today, you know, they're beating up the teachers and right. stuff, you know. So you got teachers trying to raise your kids and stuff, or they should start at home, or the streets going to raise them. So different things like that. I got one called, um, I got one called If, you know, and it's basically talking about, you know, if I didn't drive a fancy car, would you be my girl? You know, if I didn't have this, would you, you know, would you still be down? Okay. Um, a lot of relatable songs. Yeah, I, I see that, and you kind of covered uh, some of the social issues that are going on in the world as well, which is great. Oh, yeah. Now, how long did it take you to pull all this together from uh, start to finish, time wise? Honestly, I call, I wrote I wrote thirty songs. Me and my partner got together. We wrote thirty songs in about two weeks. Wow, that's quick. We got together in two weeks. Okay. Now, how many out of the 30 made the cut on the uh, on the CD or the album? 12, 12. 12, so you nailed it down to 12. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Now, are you, um, are you are those other tracks, are you are you going to save those for a later project? or? Yeah, I'm, actually, I'm going to re-release them, and some of them I might redo them and stuff, because, you know, you get different ideas on them and stuff like that, but I think they're all good, just the timing. And one, you know, Black Coffee, you wanted to tell a story, and they all, you know, the ones that fit together. Okay. So, um, yeah, Will, sounds like you, um, 
you got a plan. Now, what's the name of uh? Since you're independent, are you you have your own company? I'm assuming. I have my own record label record called label. Ready Music Group. Ready Music Group. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now so, is yeah. is the plan to now? Are you how many other artists do you have on your label? Well, I have different artists of interest. But what 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 I'm going to do now is I'm gonna get my stuff solidified again, get everything out, and then I'm gonna start getting artists. Okay. Gonna, you know, so if artist wants to send their stuff in, they can send it to info at readymusicgroup.com. All and, right. You know, we check it out, send three songs, your bio, pictures, and stuff, and we take it from there. But yeah, I'm gonna start looking for it, but I want to get everything situated. So once I start getting them, I can concentrate on them. Yeah, uh, and that's good. I mean, so if you're listening out there and you're an aspiring artist, uh, Will is willing and able. <laughs> yeah, and, and see, my whole focus is not, and I'm not going to promise you a Grammy, but what I want to do is get you ready, so get you in position so you can make a living doing what you love doing. Mm. Now, God has got the final say-so on what goes with that, but we can get you to the point where you can go. We're not going to take you on if we don't think we can do anything with you. But if we take you on and you do what we say do, I know we can get you to the point where you can make a living doing what you want to do. Okay. Sounds good. So, um, if I listen out there, if you know someone who wants to get into the music business, Will seem like he's a great person to, to get in contact with. And that's info at um, Ready Music Me- Group. What is it? I'm sorry again, Will? Ready Music Group. Info Ready at Ready Music Group. Okay. Dot com. Dot com. Dot org. Dot org. Dot org. My dot bad. Org. Okay. All right. And we'll have links on our um, on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Also in the show notes if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, we'll have all those links to uh, to uh, Will's uh, uh, website. So, um, good deal, Will. Now, uh, one more question here. Um, um, what do you have coming up? I know you're releasing the album 2020. Are you doing any touring now, or what's what do you what do you got going on for the Christmas holiday? Right, right now we're doing our right now we're doing our prep. We're doing all the market, getting started all the marketing and promotion because you got to build that awareness up. Then I'm gonna go out do like a you know I want to do like what we're doing now, like radio promotion, radio radio tour. Then I want to do our, like a you know a little uh, promotional tour. You know I go out you know do track shows, sing one two songs, do interviews, and get up. Then come back with a band. Okay, now uh, I'm gonna kind of. Off, off track here a little bit. I read in your bio that not only are you a singer, but you also have done some acting as well. Is that correct? Yeah, I got a partner. He used to be a stunt man for like Tom Cruise and Kevin Costner out of Michigan. Wow. And um, he does he does he's a, he does his own independent films now. So um, he got me. You know, I got you know I helped him out one time and I did a good job. So he you know cast me in a couple more of his stuff and he got something else coming up and. Um, well, you know, do some stuff with him, and I kind of like like it. It was, it was fun. So I caught the bug a little bit on that. <laughs> so how many projects have you? How many projects have you been in? Three. Three. Anything that we might. Uh, they're might not recognize? major. They're not big. No, they're not big major indie films and stuff like that. Okay. They were small roles and stuff, but this other one supposed to be a pretty nice sized role. So we'll see what happens with that. Okay, and this is definitely one uh, another another passion of yours. You said you enjoyed uh enjoyed acting. Yeah. I, I, I want to be into the media, period. I want to be into um, singing, uh, movies, videos, um, podcasting, or, you know, your own little indie radio station, um, a little magazine, online magazines, or, you know, a little bit of everything. Okay. All right. Well, that's great. And, uh, and I work at this place now called Don Janelle. I help promote that. It's a venue. It's a really, really nice, intimate, unique venue. And I do the booking for them now for uh, the, the entertainment and stuff. It's a really nice place. It's only seats about 120 people, but it's so unique and nice and sexy, man. You know, you do your little night nice anime shows, you, you know, seats 120 people, and you, you know, do your live shows, and you have music coming there. For, uh, we're going to start a first Friday. We're going to have four events a month. First Friday, Caribbean night, old school night, and then we have a sip and paint night. All right. And this is, so, in, is this in Atlanta, too? Yeah, this is in Decatur, Georgia. Decatur. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm called Don Janelle. All right, Don Janelle. Okay, well, we're going to pause again, Will. We're going to get another one of your songs here. Why don't you give me a song here that you want us to uh, to promote this time around off the new album? Um, put it, it's on tonight. On tonight? It's on tonight. It's on yeah. tonight. All right, here's Will Ready. It's on tonight on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Take a listen. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is Blaze on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. All right, well, another great song. Uh, man, you're, you're bringing them out there, brother. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> I appreciate the support. Yeah, no worries. So um, you're getting ready for the Christmas season. You're promoting early release. I'm sorry, is it early 2020 or when is uh, when the album going to drop? Uh, the single the, the single will come out in April. I'm gonna have two singles come out first, then I'm gonna bring the album out. And then in the fall, I'm gonna release a Southern Soul project, mm. EP. Now what's a what's Southern Soul? Southern Soul is like male waiters. Okay. Uh, got my whiskey, got my whiskey, um, Tucker. Uh, people like that. I don't okay. know if you heard of Tucker. No, I haven't heard of them. Have you heard of the male waiters? No. Got my whiskey? Mm-hmm. Boom, 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 boom. You never know. No, and that's Worked hard all week. Time to take a break. Play me some Marvin C. You never, you ever heard that one? No, nah, but I like to though. It sounded pretty good. Oh, oh, that's hot. That's a hot track, man. <laughs> okay, so that's coming out. You said fall of 2020. Yeah, yeah, fall of 2020. I'm gonna bring that one out. That EP. Okay. And I'm also gonna have a Christmas album next. By next Christmas, I have a Christmas uh, EP. Okay, and this is all original stuff that you're gonna do, or all, all original stuff. Okay, so you're pretty, you're pretty busy. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's great, man. So, um, anything else you want to add, Will? Before we, uh, before we cut out here. I said, anybody, anything you think you can do, but you gotta believe it first, and you gotta stick with it. It's not easy, but it doesn't have to be as hard as you make it. You know, and then anybody around you try to steal your dreams, get away from around them. But you know, you know, I'm quite sure. 
vehicle when the first person said they're gonna make a car, people probably thought he was crazy. But look, everybody driving one now, aren't they? <laughs> Birds of wisdom from Will Ready. Will, I appreciate your time, sir. Hey, I appreciate your time, man. I appreciate your love, man. I appreciate you supporting and keep doing what you're doing because it helps us artists, especially indie artists, have a, pl- a platform to get a market and promote. You know, I'm in Atlanta, you're in California. Now I got some more listeners, you know, because of you. There you go. Now, do you plan on coming to California anytime soon? Hey, or you, you, you help me promote and push it out. I sure will. I'll do what I can, my friend. Hey, I sure will. All right. All right, Will Ready. Uh, you can check out Will's music at willready.com. Also, and it's going to be available uh, mid-2020 on all the streaming services, I'm assuming, Will? Most of them be on iTunes, Amazon, all of them. Spotify, okay. all of them. Also, and if you want to get in contact with Will, he can be reached at info at willready.com. Right, Will? That's correct. Are you on all the social media sites as well? Yes, I am. And if you go to my website, it links to my social media and take you right to my pages. Okay, fantastic. And, and also, people can go to my website, put their email address in, their first name, and they can join a mailing list. So I got a monthly newsletter come out called Will's Way. And, um, and you know, it comes out monthly and stuff like that. It'll inform you on what I've got going on and everything. You can check me on little prizes and stuff also. Okay. And you also mentioned on your site you have apparel, like T-shirts and all that. So that's another way yeah, of supporting you. Yeah. Yeah, supporting me. Um, I got a, I got a promotion right now with four CDs for like twenty two dollars. That's going on. It's going to be going on to the end of the, the end of the year to December twenty thirty first, and then I'm taking it down and stuff. But I'm pro- promoting four of my CDs. It's even got my first CD on there. It's, you know, digital downloaders can get them all. It's a lot of music at twenty two oh seven. That's not too. That's not bad at all. And that's uh, you said four of your previous CDs. Uh huh. All right. And what what's the name of those CDs? Quickly. Private Party, One Love, Seduction, and Get My Groove On. Okay. You heard it here. Will Ready. Will, I appreciate your time, sir. Hey, Todd, I appreciate it, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. We need that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my best, my friend. And uh, come back again, Will, when you're just about ready to drop that album. We'll get it back out there again. I appreciate it, Todd. You take care. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. All right. You too, Will. Thank you, my friend. That's Will right, Ready. Buddy has a new CD coming out mid-2020 called Black Coffee. We're already on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. We'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Will Reddy. You can find out more about Will on his website at willready.com. Don't forget to connect with us on social media. You can also check out the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Join me next week when my guest will be Cheryl Cooley. You might remember Cheryl from the band Climax. She'll be joining us for a conversation, but that's next week. Taking us home this week is Will Ready and another song from his upcoming CD, Black Coffee. This is called If. That's our show for today. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. See you next week.